listening to Beyond the Fourth Wall, an audio look at the visual arts in Denton, Texas, the home of happiness. Beyond the Fourth Wall streams almost every Wednesday, high atop the historic Campus Theater in beautiful downtown Denton, Texas. Brought to you exclusively by DentonRadio.com and nowhere else at the moment. I'm your host, Damon Wadiko, and very excited. This is our first show of a brand new shiny year, 2014, and we have a lot of new uh, things coming on the show, a whole new look, a whole new sound, and a whole new co-host, uh, Mr. Dennis Welch. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Damon. I want to thank you for uh, so much for filling in for, for What's His Name, who used to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm, I'm honored. Oh, well, believe me, it's, it, it's no great honor. But, uh... Oh, yes, it is. And I won't be here next Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to need a vacation. <laughs> I know. It's very strenuous work. Oh, boy. Time to... But then uh, you figure out next week, we'll just your pay. <laughs> what about the calendar? You know, there's a show coming up at the Point Bank Black Box Theater this week. Yes. And do you know the name of that show? I believe it's called Back Pages. Oh, you are so close. Oh. I think it's called Paperback. Oh, yes. It, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. My, my apologies. I, I just found out myself. So. My, my apologies <laughs> no, <that's> to the <laughs> Sundown Collaborative. Right. That's right. It's uh, being put, uh, put on by a group here, a local theater group called the Sundown Collective. Uh, Isn't it collaborative? Oh, is it collaborative now? They may have... I think it was collective at one time, but I think you're right. <laughs> you know what? This is horrible. It's put on by a theater group that we just like to call Sundown Theater. And um, have you ever seen one of their shows? I have not. I'm I, sorry. I have seen a few of their shows. They're, yeah. they're very interesting. They're a scrappy, plucky group of young people who've gotten together and uh, put on shows. Yeah, uh, uh, they once did a production of A Clockwork Orange that I wanted to go see, but I couldn't. That was, in fact, I think, if not their first, one of their very early shows. Yeah, I wanted to see that as well. Uh, I saw a production of Othello that they did. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you it was updated. Yes, and another show that was sort of a, oh, a multimedia thing, and I have to admit, I do not remember the name. Um, uh, but anyway, they are uh, a fine group. They've been around now for a few years, so they, they know their stuff. Uh, the show's called Paperbacks. It'll be at the Point Bank Black Box Theater at uh, 318 West Hickory Street in Denton, Texas. And the dates are January 17th and 19th, and then the 23rd and 26th. And those shows are at 8 p.m. And... Uh, then we have a show coming to the big stage here at the Campus Theater. Yes. And what do you know about that? It's the question that's on everyone's lips. It certainly is. Who's in bed with the butler? Dun, 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 dun. Yes. And uh, apparently it's a, a, a comedy, a farce. Yes. Directed by a friend of the show. Yeah, Johnny Williams. That's right. And the performances are June 24th, 25th, 26th. And then the 30, 30th and 31st, and then uh, and February 1st and 2nd. And uh, th those shows, uh, the January shows are the uh, weekday, or <laughs> not weekday, but uh, Friday and Saturday shows, and Thursday. Anyway, those are the shows at 8 o'clock. And then February 1st and 2nd are the... Uh, Sunday matinee performances at 2 o'clock. Did I say a wrong time there? Uh, I think so. I, I think, think I did. I think you screwed everything I up. I do, too. I do, too. The shows in January, which are the 24th, 25th, 26th, and then the 30th and 31st, those are at 7.30. And then the two shows in February, February 1st and 2nd, are the that Sunday... Does. That doesn't make sense. Does that not make sense? No. No, you know what? It sure doesn't. Uh, I will have to rectify this situation. Go to the theater website and... Uh, we don't have two Sundays in a yeah, row. Yeah, you're right. That is, that is very stupid. And 
I lifted this right from the website, and apparently I lost something in translation. So, folks, if you want to know exactly when these shows are, <laughs> go to the website, DCT, uh, what is it, DCT.com. Or... <laughs> okay. Starting Den- the new... DenCommunityTheater.com. DenCommunityTheater.com. Thank you. I knew you were here for a reason. You... <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Well, as I've said before numerous times on this show, uh, I do zero preparation, as you can tell, and really do not know what I'm doing. And I am the laziest man in radio, but our guest today is Mr. Jake Laughlin, perhaps the hardest working man in Denton Radio. Hello, Jake. Hey, Damon. How are we doing? Uh, We're doing fine. Uh, our regular listeners know you as Jake the Sound Guy, but you are so much more. <laughs> you are the CEO, the genius, the creator of DentonRadio.com. I don't know if any of those words are, are actually true. Um, I did create DentonRadio.com. It is far from genius, uh, a genius move. So you know, now we're stuck doing things like this all the time. I was so. going to say, <laughs> you put us on. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was the one genius, genius move we ever genius. did. You are genius. genius so. It was brilliant. No, you are uh, a young man with a lot of very big ideas. Uh, tell us a little bit about how it, it all started, the genesis of uh, Denton Radio. Well, I had been doing um, some very, very small-time music booking in college. Um, prior to that, I had no involvement in music. I grew up in, in Ponder. We didn't even have a school band. It was very small. Um, and so I spent most of my time growing up in Denton because Denton had a movie theater, and we thought that was real cool, you know. So I uh, spent almost all of my time uh, growing up here. And then when I got a little older, ended up moving to Denton, and that's where I went to college and did the whole deal. So I've been in Denton my whole life. Um, started doing a little bit of music booking and was shocked at how much music was out there. And not only how much music was there, how flipping good it was. It was amazing. I mean, you know, when you think local music, you think three guys playing in their grandmother's garage and they're really not that good. They're just looking to get chicks. And you, know, you know what I mean? Like, and so I was shocked at how mainstream the music was and how well done everything was and, um, and wondered, how is it that I've never heard of this before? I mean, I've been here forever. How could I not know about this? And the more musicians I met, the more I heard from all of them. You know, nobody really plays our stuff. We don't really get booked that much. Nobody really seems to care. And um, I went, wow, it's not for a lack of talent. It's just for a lack of marketing. It's for a lack of awareness. It's uh, a lack of something to let people know what's going on there. And I said, well, if nobody else will play them, I will. And that's the whole genesis of Denton Radio. Well, very good. Uh, So what's your first step? I mean, does it hit you suddenly that we need a a local online music presence? Or is it something that sort of develops slowly or... You know, you just wake up one day and get all this equipment. <laughs> well, I think like anything, you know, it kind of developed over time. Um, it, the the what it is now is certainly not what we envisioned in the beginning. Uh, it's it's very different, but we're really happy with it. Um, we originally, of course, like everybody kind of thinks of when they hear Denton Radio, we first thought FM, you know, and that's what we'll do. Um, FM radio. Yeah, FM broadcast. Radio. Right. Wow. Yeah, doing doing the the big boy radio and. Um, the more we studied that industry and got to new to know people in that industry, the more we found out that you can't. Um, the uh, the B- Fort Worth one of the is one of the biggest uh, business districts in the country, and so when you've got that many big businesses compacted into one area, they just start buying radio stations, and so all the frequencies around here are gone. I mean, AM, FM, low frequency education. I mean, it's really hard to get one. And if you do get one, the FCC is going to be so all over you, it's not even going to be worth it. I mean, the KGB. And, and so it's, uh, it, it was one of those things where we said, you know, is the dream dead? Is, is this just gone? And I'd been studying uh, some guys like Seth Godin and some of the technology marketing minds of the time. And Seth Godin had this theory that if internet were to ever become standard in cars, which we see the beginnings of with some of the earlier models and mm-hmm. cell phones and things like this, that online radio would take over FM radio overnight. Um, it would be this this huge oh, revolution. No doubt. You know, yeah, where you've got you know ten channels to choose from in your car, you've got a million to choose from on the internet, right? And so you can you can get so much more content and really customize it for yourself. And we said, man, if that's really the case, and we believe that it is, we need to to create an online radio station and create it now while it's still kind of weird. 
and, and ride that wave up with the technology over time and figure it out now before it becomes the norm. And then we'd never be able to start this thing from, from grassroots, oh, you know? Right. Um, and so it's kind of started from the bottom and said, you know, let's, let's try and build this thing up over time. And, and that's how we came to, to do online radio. Well, very cool. You know, I, I've heard recently that Muskogee, Oklahoma, of all places, is thinking about implementing a system where you can get Wi-Fi for free. And I'm figuring if this kind of idea really takes off and works, then that will definitely make Internet radio available in cars oh, and, yeah. and, and everywhere. Well, Google has a really interesting thing they launched a little under a year ago, and it's the Google Balloon. Have you seen this? No, I may have heard something uh, about it's this. It's kind of funky. Like they, they, they're essentially what they're doing is they're release, re- releasing these gigantic balloons in the air that shoot down Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> and and it's and it's free, you know. And you just link up to it. Now, what they've got right now is you put this like receiver that's like a softball on your house. I think that's just phase one. My my belief, my guess is that Google is going to put hundreds and thousands of these balloons in the air and it's going to provide free Wi-Fi for anybody right. and then of course when you access it it'll take you straight to Google and so it's a great way for them to get themselves out there they're probably also going to data collect and do that whole thing and everything but the point is is we all get free Wi-Fi out of the deal you know and so more and more programs like these and data plans are becoming so much more accessible um, like I think somebody pretty pretty soon is in, within the next year is going to pay to have the whole square uh, get Wi-Fi and so, because right. the square is kind of a dead zone right now, and so now we're going to have free Wi-Fi all over the square. Yeah, um, I think this free Wi-Fi is really going to spread. It's you know, whether be cool. it be by balloon or yeah, know, whether a phone not, pole, I don't balloon know, balloon or pigeon or whatever, but, uh, it, but it'll get there. Uh, I wonder if it will be possible to to beam Wi-Fi down uh, by satellite someday. I, I really sure. don't understand the technology, I mean, but yeah. I mean, there's there's got to be you know more and more ways to do it. I mean, now that the internet has become the cornerstone of so many different businesses and so many different parts of everything, <laughs> there's right. going to be more and more uh, inventions and more and more discoveries that are going to make this thing even faster and faster and faster. Dennis, do you have Wi-Fi in your home? No. You do not? <laughs> <laughs> Who am I talking to? The man doesn't even own a cell phone. That's okay. Um, <laughs> I... Uh, I <laughs> Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, as as technologically illiterate as I am, even I now have Wi-Fi in my home, whereas yeah. I did not before. Yeah. But you know, everybody I think is going to. Well, it was really interesting. Like I got to give a presentation uh, yesterday to uh, the Small Business Development Center about all the new internet programs that are being developed out there for for small businesses that are free, that are quick, and that can take your business to an entirely uh, new level and it's it's amazing what's being created out there so how long has uh dentonradio.com been you know out there as a website well that's live kind of, it's kind of an interesting question um as a company um because our, our team formed uh may 8th 2011 uh it took us nine months to get a website up uh but it was terrible and most of the time didn't play um, and then it took us quite a while after that, and we went through about two or three different versions. And then about a year ago tomorrow, January 16th we, we, of last year, we partnered up with the Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, for Denton, and they uh, footed, footed the bill for us to get the current website that we have that plays on most devices like a dream. And um, so that, that was when we really said, okay, this thing works now. That, that's, that was really one of our big birth dates. But May 8, 2011 is when we started, and it took us about a year and a half to get it to a point where we were happy with it. Okay. Uh, so you uh, got a lot of musicians on board right away? I mean, has the, the uh, no. reception been? No, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's interesting. The music industry is in a very funky spot right now in that the only thing making money is lawsuits <laughs> and Beyonce yeah, yeah lawsuits and Beyonce that's pretty much it um, you know big licensing companies like ASCAP BMI CSAC these are great companies however if you're going about music in a di- in a different way in a way that doesn't quite fit that music industry model um, it's a little tougher uh, in that you know ASCAP and BMI and CSAC and things they're designed to get Brad Paisley and Rihanna paid 
you know um <laughs> for local musicians they don't really see anything out of it it's still i suggest every musician to sign up with those guys but none of our guys were going to see anything out of that right. so by going through those kinds of channels and stuff just didn't make sense to me and i wanted to make sure that any money that we were spending was going into growing a company that was going to get more exposure to our musicians so um, instead, we decided to do it to where every musician could register individually through Denton Radio and sign paperwork that said, okay, Denton Radio's got my permission to do this. Well, we didn't have an automated registration system um, for, I mean, maybe only eight months ago uh, through a program called EchoSign. And um, so prior to that, we had to sit down individually with every single artist um, and, uh, and make something happen. Um, and so that took forever. We had a big registration and, and pushed it out and tried to get as many artists to come when we did our first our first big registration. And we had, I think, somewhere between 19 or 23 musicians show up that day. Wow! And so it was a it was a slow it was a slow growing process. But now that we've got it in an automated system and we're we're coming up with new forms of, of stuff every day it's it's growing it's growing as it's growing way too freaking fast right now we actually just brought on a, a new person ellie meyer to our team that's gonna she's gonna start in the office on monday she was an intern for a while and then left and we realized we couldn't survive without her and so we're bringing her back on monday and she has got a lot of, <laughs> of stuff to do so if you're a musician listening to this we haven't ignored you we've just got so much of a backup going up right now that we've got more musicians than we can get into the system wow um, that's a great problem so, yeah it's it's, it, it's it's amazing how much music is in this town oh for sure and whenever i tune in to dentonradio.com uh there's always somebody playing that i never even heard of and it's right. good good stuff yeah it's really good yeah i i love getting to listen to the local music here it's it's kind of funny though it's a little bit of a social challenge just because whenever i meet somebody new and they say well what kind of music do you like or what are your favorite bands or what do you listen to this is all i listen to now because it's just while so they never know what i'm talking about right and so i have to work really hard to convince them that i'm not a hipster that's like against mainstream music i just <laughs> i just never around it anymore uh now uh as far as you know Denton has a, a wide variety of music in this town. Everything from um, oh, country to heavy metal to jazz, of course, is yeah. big. Do you play all the different genres of music? on the site or? yeah i mean we do well we do as best as we can uh -huh. uh, with that kind of stuff and so we've got five genres that really are kind of vague uh -huh. um so we're able to sneak a bunch of stuff in there and so our main channel will play anything right you know, it could be hip-hop it could be bluegrass we're going to put it all together there right. um next channel is the americana channel now americana is kind of hard to define so we stick everything from country to bluegrass to folk to uh, some jazz to what you know blues to whatever and classic rock is all in that channel the next one's our rock out channel and people look at that and say okay it's going to be rock and roll and it's kind of not it's more of like an alternative heavier metal -y. Uh, that's the one all the kids like and the parents don't it's all still family friendly but it's a lot more it's a lot more energy um, and then there's the easy listening of course which that could be anything and then the last one is girl power and that's nothing but female vocalists and so that could be of any genre as, as well hmm. so um, you know you, you just mentioned family friendly so the FCC though does not really have any jurisdiction over what you are right. allowed to right broadcast. FCC has no control over the internet currently um, but we decided from the beginning we wanted to have a family-friendly policy. Mm -hmm. um, and we just had a few different reasons for that. Sure. Um, should we talk about that? or? I, if that's up to you. I mean, uh, well, I mean, it's just... I'm it, open to... I mean, one, we wanted to... I, 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 I told my team, here's the general rule. If my brother turns this on and he and he wants to fight me because of something that my nephew heard we can't play it but <laughs> okay. that was that was super real number one and uh, and that was just always a big big conviction of everybody on my team they you know uh, bone doggy and all those guys they right. all believed that that was the deal the other thing is that we're trying to set these musicians up uh, for success as best as we possibly can right. and um, i had an old movie producer friend She's not. She'll kill me if I call her old. She's not. She wasn't old. She just. She. I've known her forever. You've known her a while. Yeah. yeah. And so she'd done some private films and, and but done some things with Antonio Banderas and some things like that. And she, uh, she came to me one day because I wanted to make movies uh, years and years ago. And and she said to me, Jake, what do you think is the the highest uh, grossing movie? Like, what's the highest grossing rating? 
And I said, well, it's probably R. It's either R or PG-13. Um, you know, what makes the most money? And she said, not even close. It's G. She said, the lower the rating, the more money is made through that film. You know, when it's R, only, you know, Bobby and Susie can go see it. When it's G, Bobby, Susie, Billy, Kimmy, and little baby Sue got to all go see it, or otherwise nobody's getting in. And if it's and NC-17, so, nobody gets to see exactly, it. Exactly, right? It's not going right? to be released. Right, exactly. So um, there's niche markets and things for that kind of stuff, you know. But um, for the most part, the lower the rating, the more money is made. And so, so many of these musicians are young guys that are finally out of their parents' house. So they get this opportunity to get on a stage, and they think that... that it, it's just going to be cool to have a potty mouth while you're up there. And, and you know, I'm not prudish about it. You can do whatever the heck you want to sure. do. But just because you can do it doesn't necessarily mean that you should. And so they're not going to get on mainstream radio unless they've got some recordings that are FCC approved. They're not going to see a lot of play in a lot of different venues unless they've got something that's family friendly, at least PG-13. Uh, they've got a much better shot to make more money if they at least have some content in their arsenal that is that is family friendly, and so if if they can't provide that, then we can't play them. And so our our goal is to try and push more musicians to do that because most of them don't think that that's going to be the case. Sure, sure. I and I, I struggle every week here to to keep my language in check. Out of <laughs> respect for your well, as soon as the microphone goes off, that's <laughs> when we just all start cursing. That's just <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Have you <laughs> have you ever had to uh, just refuse to to host a band or you know turn one away due to content um sometimes our our biggest this is going to get me in trouble our our biggest <laughs> issue is you don't have to say is, anything to no, 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 no. <laughs> our biggest issue is with hip hop um we love working with the hip hop guys mm -hmm. the problem is um hip hop uh content and language is not always super family friendly right. it just it, it just is a rule that we've found um and when you find one that's super, super clean, content and language, it's usually not very good. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And so that's Hip -hop been for the, Jesus. Yeah, right? You know, that's been the, the – which some of that's not even all that bad, but, no. but, but it's few and far between. And so we, we've had an a, a, a interesting road finding that. And so um, – we're getting there, and we're seeking it out actively, trying to find more and more of that content. But um, the, the, the view and the concept and the perception of local music is, like I said before, grungy kids that have no talent and, and no respect for the craft. And we wanted to really make, uh, put a stake in the ground to say, no, 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 we're going to prove to everybody else this is mainstream quality stuff. These guys care about what they're doing, and it's not just a bunch of grungy junk and we wanted to prove that right um so beyond uh the music you also have other programs such as <laughs> this one right. that also uh cater to uh the community they're informational right i think i think we're sort of informational although you'd never know it by my <laughs> reading of the calendar um uh, so what are some of those other uh programs and are you planning on adding more of that type of content or really just going to stay with the music and where you're at? Well, I don't know. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting um, pendulum in that we swing back and forth between going, we're going to do a million shows, and then we pull back and say, we're not going to do any shows anymore, and then we just kind of go back and forth. Um, so we've kind of had to be selective and kind of handpick. Anytime we do a presentation or anything like that around town, there's always somebody that goes, ooh, I want to do a show. And, and some of them are really great ideas, but... Um, it's it's harder for us to to host those shows because we're just we're just getting low on manpower and we don't currently have any shows that we are not also producing and so adding any more content is probably going to have to be um, done by some other party where they produce it and then they just provide it to us and and we play it out there um, and we'd be open to that that'd be great um, as long as it can be clean and have something to do with Denton. Um, the other shows we've got going on are um, Discover Denton, mm -hmm. which that's the CVB show, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, and they talk about different events across town, you know, whatever it may be. Very similar to this format. It's not live, but it does play every Tuesday um, on the main channel at 2, 7, and 10. Mm 
Um, then there's Transit Talk. Now, Transit Talk's been in a bit of a hiatus. Oh, the train show. Yeah, I, yeah, favorite. that's the train show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the DCTA puts that one out, and that could be about anything. That's just kind of what the, the DCTA uh, is looking to promote. But it's been a long time since we've done one of those. And so we've been, we've been working and kind of planning behind the scenes as to what we would do if we brought that show back. Um, so we're working on it. And then the other one is Doggy Time. And that, <laughs> for a lot of people listening, they oh, know yeah. Bone Doggy. He's you know, kind of the musical legend. He's a the, local legend. The little, the little Wolfman Jack kind of character. And so um, he's got his show. own, yeah, he's got his own little Doggy Time show. And he hasn't done that one in a while either. But, um, but he, that's just, you know, we, we have him do that so he doesn't chew up the furniture. And <laughs> he's gonna kill me, <laughs> but, but, but um, no. But it's 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 a fun little show, and he gets to to go behind the scenes with some of the other uh, musicians. There's one other that we do, but we don't we haven't canned them in any of them yet, and that's our CD spotlights. Where if a new um, if there's a new CD that comes out, we sit down with the band and we go through every song on the CD and play them. And then we talk about the stories behind it. Why'd you write this? What was going on here? Tell us this. And, and we admit, try and get all the dirty laundry. Those yet, and I need to listen to those because that idea really does sound. It's interesting. fun. It's really fun. And eventually, we are going to can those and have those available on the website anytime. But mm-hmm. typically, uh, they just come out live, and and you've got to um, you got to just wait on social media for when we we talk about those. So like us on the on the facey face, and and we'll let you know. Um, so uh, have you ever heard? Um, uh, the Bone Doggy uh, show. Yes, I have. <laughs> that guy. He, he's quite a character. <laughs> that guy can talk. Yeah. Now, he's not. He's not like me stumbling all over my myself and my words. That guy has golden, a golden voice for radio. I agree. You have to ask him to be on this show for us. I would love to do that. <laughs> he would. He would dig it. But um, yeah, <laughs> alive. I don't know if I'd get a word in edgewise. <laughs> That's good. Well, no, he um, he does put in a lot of thought into into what he's doing when he does okay. those, um, and they it kind of shocks me when I sit down and really listen to the the um, uh, the time and the thought that he's putting, like how intricate it is, and I'm like, Dude. oh yeah, he's got comedy bits oh, and he's, uh, he's, interviews and yeah. it's. Something. Well, that's we even we had to t- finally say like, dude, take take a break for a little while. Like <laughs> he's been an average of like sixteen hours every week on those shows, and I was just like, bro, like <laughs> too much. <laughs> well, you'll never have to worry about that from me. I put in no time, so awesome. <laughs> but uh, okay, so you have the the, I guess, would we call it a website or is it another name? Internet radio station. I mean, what, what yeah, is the I mean, term you prefer? Website. Okay, I, I mean. Online radio station is just what we say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a website. Okay, so you have the website. Um, but you also have a lot of, I guess, events yeah. ar- around uh, Yeah, we have about 20 to 30 live events uh, a month. Wow. You must be exhausted. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ready for this to, to be over so I can go home. But I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, kid, I'm joking, Damon. I'm joking. No, Actually, that, we're, we're getting low on time. <laughs> but tell us about some of the events coming up and okay. let's see if we can get some people out there. All right. Well, tonight, while we're streaming this live, we're over at the Smiling Moose, uh, which is that deli on uh, Carroll. Um, we, um, Rusty Taco, every, we just moved to every Saturday. We're there every Saturday from 7 to 9. Um, that one's a good night. Well, what are at these events? Is it live bands? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. So anything from you know from singer songwriters, which is probably what you're going to get at Smiling Moose and, and Rusty Taco, to full bands like we do at Dan Silverleaf and stuff like that. Um, the Dan Silverleaf show might be my favorite because um, Dan's Dan's What's a great venue. For yeah. You, well, they I book mean. they book a lot of big you know national acts Travel and stuff, acts, and these yeah. local guys really want to get in there. But Dan doesn't know who to book and who not to book of the small local guys because they're small local guys. So he doesn't know what's going to work and what's not. So once a month, he gives us like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And, uh, and he says, okay, bring in your guys. Let me see what they got. And let's see if we can fill. If they can fill this place on a Tuesday, then maybe they can do it on a Saturday. You know, so we take a bunch of really, you know, the, the young guys that are really chomping at the bit, that really deserve a high-quality gig, and we get to stick them in there. And so January 28th. We're going to have a really cool lineup. Um, and so it's going to open up at 8 o'clock uh, with this kid named Nick Locken, who's fantastic. Uh, then it's going to be the Zach Balch band after him. 
uh, at nine. And Zach Balch was one of the reasons why, one of the first guys that I ever worked with that made me go, holy cow, didn't Scott great music. And then they were going to follow it up uh, with the J.R. Bird band. And J.R. Bird is making huge splashes around town, and, and he's he's a big deal, which I'm really excited about, or should be a big deal. But <laughs> um, So that's going to be good. And then tomorrow we're at a little place out in Aubrey, uh, called Heartbreaks and Hangovers. We, <laughs> we've argued with them about that name ever since they changed it. But Wow, that is right um, out of uh, oh, Texas yeah. Gothic myth. Oh, epic. yeah. But every now and then we'll go outside of Denton to venues that say, we want to book Denton musicians and we want to get them in a position where they can get paid. And so that's when we tell it. Well, we won't work with anybody outside of Denton unless they're willing to put Denton bands on stages. And so that's who we're working with. And so tomorrow night uh, from 8 to midnight we'll be at Heartbreaks and Hangovers. We're going to do a song swap between uh, Ellie Meyer, Caleb Coonrod, and a new guy named Jordan Fruget, and then we'll have a band called the Bone Handle Set uh, close out the night, and that's going to be a, that's going to be a pretty good show. Well, Jake, um, as you know, we're running out of time. I, I don't like to do more than a half hour. Well, when I'm not doing the tech, <laughs> right. I, I don't. I'm not I here to wave you off. So, <laughs> but I got But ever since I first heard about Denton Radio and getting to be a part of it, it it's really exciting and it's it's Thank exciting you. to just be a little bit on the ground floor of this and you know i'm not ever letting you out of my sight because you know <laughs> he's going to be a millionaire someday yeah. a billionaire oh god we're going to need jobs someday <laughs> and <laughs> i think what you're doing for local musicians is terrific Thank you. and i wish you the best in all of your endeavors well, i appreciate that and i do want to say what you guys are doing uh, e even with this show is no seriously you've done some really really cool stuff and had some very interesting guests um, and, and getting to know the staff around here or at least the team around here team. has been has been really an, an honor um, and I've loved well, you are now a Mike member Barrow of our theater and, family oh yeah well thank you One, I'm, um, I'm honored <laughs> it's uh, <yeah. laughs> no it's it's seriously you guys do incredible stuff here so thank you so much for letting me be a part of it uh, I would like to continue on just for a few more minutes because speaking of our theater family, um, we did have something happen. Um, Dennis, do you, you want to talk a, a little bit about this? Or? Okay. Um, our facilities manager, a real, real sweetheart, uh, Mike Strecker. Who has been on the show. Yeah, and um, I had a very uh, tragic thing happen on uh, New Year's Day night. Uh, his son suffered... Uh, uh, well, it, it was an event. He had this event that had, he had to be taken to the emergency room. And uh, what it's called is uh, an AVN, arterial venous uh, malformation. Right. It's like a mass of veins. Yeah, it's like a little knot of veins and arteries that got tangled together right. uh, uh, in his brain. And uh, is, is, so it's evidently something he was born with. And the doctor said that, that it's common for them to bleed, but it was not common for them to bleed this much. Right. So he was in a, a very bad condition uh, for a while. He, things are looking better for him now. Uh, he's, he's had a couple of operations to relieve the pressure, and uh, he's going to have uh, major surgery soon. Uh, once they get the swelling to go down, it'll probably be a couple of weeks. And, uh, of course, these operations are not cheap. And, uh, you know, he's one of our theater family. So uh, there's a website. And uh, I'll let you get your pencils. But uh, there's, a, there's a website to sort of help out the, the Strucker family and uh, with going through this time. And uh, that website is www.caringbridge.org slash visit slash Jackson Strucker. And that's J-A-C-K-S-O-N-S-T-R-E-C-H-E-R. -E and if you go to that website, it'll give you updates on his condition and uh, where people can go to, uh, to help out a bit, um, you know. Like anybody please, the please the show your support for Mike Stryker and his son Jackson. Um, we we all need to get together, uh, you know, rally around them and 
and uh, help them get through this. So anything that you can donate would be greatly appreciated. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, we, we went over a little bit long, uh, but we haven't been. This is our first show of the new year, and we've been gone for the last couple of weeks. I want to thank again Dennis Welch, your new co-host. Thank you. And our guest and sound engineer extraordinaire, and again, the genius behind all of this. Well, not this show, but the genius behind DentonRadio.com, uh, Jake Laughlin. Thank you very much, and come out to the shows. Uh, that's it. Uh, bye, folks. Good night.